Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to study how to create a Boolean function. Now, what is Boolean function? A function that returns true or false value. Okay. So, here we will study how to create this kind of function. Now, suppose I want to check whether my number is prime or not. And if there is function is prime. Okay. And it is checking whether my number is prime or not. So, if my number is prime, what it does? It will return true. And if it is not prime, it will return false. Okay. So, depending on this true and false value, I can perform the further operations. But how to represent true and false in C programming? Because there is no true and false value in C programming. But as we studied in a relational operator, that true is represented by 1 in C and 0 is represented, sorry, false is represented by 0 in C. Okay. So, what we have to do? Suppose I want to return a true value, I'll return 1 and if I want to return false value, I'll return 0. Okay. So, here 1 and 0 are what? Of which type? Both are of type integer. Both are of type what? Integer. So, what will be my return type? My return type is always going to be integer. Okay. So, let us see one example on this. So, here we are going to write a function that will check a number is perfect or not. Now, what is perfect number? A perfect number is a positive integer that is equal to the sum of its proper divisor. Now, let us understand it by example. Say, actually 6 is perfect number. So, how to determine it? Start dividing it from 1 to less than that number. So, up to 1 to 5. So, is 6 divisible by 1? Yes. Is it divisible by 2? Yes. Is it divisible by 3? Yes. Now, when I say it is divisible, means remainder should be what? 0. Is 6 divisible by 4? No. Is 6 divisible by 5? No. Okay. So, which proper divisors we got? 1, 2, 3. Now, take a sum of this. So, what is the sum? Sum is 6 which is equal to this number okay means a sum of proper divisor is equal to the number then your number is what perfect number so for that we have to write a function okay so what our function will do it will first of all calculate the sum of its divisor and then it will check whether sum and the original number are same or not. If it is same, then we will return true. And if it is different, we will return false. And in this case, true means we will return 1 and false means we will return 0. Now, what logic you will apply here? You will start dividing it from 1 to less than that number. So, definitely I have to use loop. Okay. So, I will start my loop from 1 till say this is n. So, I will say till less than n. And what will I do? I will increment value of i by 1 because there is a regular interval of value 1. Okay. And to check a divisibility, we already studied this part. To check a divisibility, which operator is used? Mod operator is used. Okay. Because it gives us a remainder. So, by taking a mod of n by n, we will check whether remainder is 0 or not. So, if remainder is 0, we will add this divisor to our sum. So, in this way, we will get sum of our number, sum of, of proper divisors. Okay. So, let us write a prototype first. So, as I said, we are going to return true and false value and true and false value are represented by 1 and 0, which is nothing but an integer. Okay. So, let us name our function. Say, is perfect. Generally, a function that returns true and false value are named like this. It always starts with is. So, it is just a convention. Okay. If you want to specify another name, definitely you can mention it. Then it is accepting single argument, right? At a time I can calculate us. I can check whether single number is perfect or not. So, definitely it will accept a single argument. So, this is what? This is my prototype. Now, let us write function definition. So, int is perfect. Here, you have to specify your argument name also. Now, according to our 
logic as you can see here i have to divide it from 1 to 5 so i need one variable which will have this value that is i again i have to store the sum of this proper divisors so i need one variable also s so let us initialize it with 0 okay so look at here carefully what are the variables required for this functions are declared inside this function okay now let us use for loop so for i is equal to 1 we have to go till less than x okay and then we are incrementing it by 1 so i plus plus now to check a fully divisibility i have to use mod operator and again i want to check a uh, check it with zero also i want to perform comparison also and depending on that i want to decide whether to add that factor or that divisor to sum or not so for that i have to use if okay so if n mod i is equal to equal to zero so if remainder is zero add this i to my sum variable which is s here so s is equal to s plus i so that's why i initialize my s with zero okay if i do not initialize it what happened it will contain a garbage value and my i get added with a garbage value so that's why i initialize it with zero because anything added to zero is same result and if my remainder is not equal to zero okay if my number is not equal to zero i do not want to perform anything so it is not necessary or it is not compulsory to write a else part here it is not required you can skip it so when your number is divisible by i number is divisible by i at that time only it will be added to sum otherwise next value of i will be taken okay now once for loop get completed what we have to check we have to check whether my sum this is what this is my sum and this is n whether these two values are same or not so my sum is in variable s and my original number is in variable m so if it is same that means it is perfect number so we are not going to print it here what we are going to do we are we will say that return 1 because if my number is perfect i want to return true value so true is represented by 1 in c okay and if it is not equal means sum and n are not same in that case i have to return false so i'll return what zero so this is nothing but false okay now how to call this function definitely i have to write a main program for that right so void main in my main function what will i do i'll declare one variable i'll accept that variable from user so here i'll say enter number okay then we will scan this value and we will keep it in variable n and now i want to check whether my n is perfect or not okay and if my n is perfect then what i want to do i want to dis just display the message that n is perfect okay so and if it is not perfect i want to display the message that it is not perfect so here also i have to put if okay so i'll say is perfect n okay so what this function will do the call is given to the function if n is perfect one will be written otherwise zero will be written okay so one means what true so if it returns true or if it if it returns one which is nothing but a true that means if condition satisfies when if executes when the answer of this expression is what true so if my number is perfect it will return one one is nothing but true so if condition satisfies and the part under if get executed so here we are displaying the message that it is perfect number okay and if it is not perfect a function will return zero function will return zero and here zero means what false so it automatically switches to the else part say print f not perfect okay so i hope you got this 
in the same way you can try for the is prime function we already know the logic of is prime function and i already explain it okay so for the reference you can refer the video of uh, prime number program and similarly you can write a program write a function to check your number is armstrong or not so for that you can write is armstrong function okay now let us execute this function in code block so here i already uh, completed the definition of a function and as well as i wrote a main program also see a prototype is written here okay the function definition is written in the same way as i explained you okay depending on the result of s and x i written the 1 and 0 and from main program a call is given to the function okay number is scanned it is kept in variable n and if n is perfect function will return a true and if condition evaluates to true and this part get executed otherwise else part get executed so let us run this so as i said 6 is perfect number yes it is working fine now let us try for 9 which is not a perfect number see 9 is not a perfect number one more perfect number is there that is 28 28 is a perfect number you can check for this then 496 is perfect number yes then one more perfect number is there 8100 and okay I, i i do not remember so you can check for that even you can write a program that will print the series of perfect number we already saw some kind of uh, this kind of program that we printed the series of prime numbers so you can try for this series of perfect number and you will get the numbers within 1 to 1000 some you can define some range and you can find the numbers within that range okay so i hope you enjoy this video and you got the importance of a boolean functions okay so here in this program what we did we simply print whether it is perfect or not but in the real scenario you may need to perform some other kind of operation also if you if your number is perfect then you want to you want to perform some other kind of operation also so in that case this kinds of functions are very useful so in next video we are going to see one more interesting example of function and one more interesting concept also so thank you